Hello everyone, welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today I'm covering a story titled California GOP endorsed a man who said his bodily fluids were worth $15 million. But wait, oh wait, it gets even better. It gets even better. He's a sovereign citizen. Yeah, you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. This is going to be good. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. This is the Common Sense Academy. Um, we cover sovereign citizen stories, uh, auditors, other news of the weird, but mostly sovereign citizens. Uh, if you like my channel, please subscribe like comment and share also I have a second channel it's called Joe the lawyer I'm an attorney practicing attorney in Pittsburgh PA um, so I put a legal spin on everything that I review and analyze um, sign up for or I'm sorry go over to Joe the lawyer subscribe to that channel I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers on that channel lots of fun content more legal based over there over here we do legal analysis of uh, strange news sovereign citizens and auditors so please subscribe to this channel as well common sense Academy and do me a favor give it a share give my videos a share send them to a friend in a Facebook message an email or a text that's a free way to support the show I'm also trying to get to 10,000 subscribers so please subscribe ask your friends ask anyone else who likes the show to subscribe as well all right um before we get started a quick a quick same time sip I have here the official common sense Academy mug uh, Anything that we drink, it tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. <sighs> Pretty good stuff. Apple cider, all gone. All right. California GOP endorsed a man said his bodily fluids were worth $15 million. Um, there, there's some highlights, but I'll get to that. The California Republican Party endorsed a former Green Party presidential candidate who once claimed that his bodily fluids were worth $15 million in a lawsuit that, according to a lawyer, appears to have evoked the fringe legal theories of, you guessed it, the sovereign citizen movement. Navy veteran Joe Collins has also raised nearly $761,000 for his long shot bid to unseat 15 term Democratic California Republican Maxine Waters campaign records show. He first entered the political arena as an anti Trump presidential candidate in November 6, 2016, and has since switched political parties four times, most recently to a pro Trump Republican. Federal Election Commission records show since Collins launched his congressional bid in July 2019, his campaign has spent $112,000 on food and travel and has paid nearly $148,000 to a mysterious consulting firm that Collins once reported to the FEC shared the same office address as his campaign. He better be careful there, mixing campaign and campaign contributions. Better be careful, buddy. In 2018, while running for president, <laughs> stop me, stop, please, stop. While running for president, Collins revealed he had just $22 in his checking account and court documents related to a lawsuit he had filed the year prior against San Diego. Well, I think we can all agree this guy is no Mike Bloomberg. Representing himself in the lawsuit, Collins sought the termination of a child support order and damages of $100 million. Lawyers for San Diego said Collins' complaint was nearly impossible to decipher. I wonder if the state of California can garnish his campaign funds in order to pay his child support. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. During the reporting process for this story, Collins personally sent a cease and desist notice to the Daily Caller News Foundation with no apparent legal representation. The would-be federal legislator claimed the DCNF, Daily Caller, I, I believe, had no right to question him about his previous record as an anti-Trump presidential candidate, his personal finances, or the legal theories he espoused in his lawsuit against San Diego. 
Um, I wonder if he used a wet signature on that cease and desist. And if you know where I'm coming from, it's from my last video where this sovereign was claiming the document was invalid without a wet signature. Maybe he put the seal on here, or you all saw my favorite. Maybe, maybe he signed his name across the stamp. Joe Collins. Oh, there's, this is where it gets good. A living, breathing man with a soul. I hope you are, sir. In December 2017, while campaigning as anti-Trump presidential candidate, Collins sued San Diego Department of Child Support for $100 million in termination of his support. Prior to issuing his cease and desist, Collins told the DCNF the DNA test confirmed he was not the father of the child he's been ordered to financially support. If that's the case, you just show the court the DNA test and it's over, buddy. He said he was still actively fighting the case now that he's campaigning for Congress, representing himself without a lawyer. Nah, -uh, really? Collins argued in the lawsuit he was a living, breathing man with a soul, acting in a sovereign capacity, and is the registered owner of his own self. Boy, I hope you're the owner of your own self. Please take responsibility for your own self's actions as well. On those grounds, Collins declined to participate in any proceedings related to child support, saying the process violates my inalienable rights as a living, breathing man. Oh, well, I don't have to follow the rules because I breathe. Joe Co E. Collins, doing business as Joe Edward Collins III, does not consent to any <coughs> contract, codes, state codes, statutes, commercial present presentments, or anything similar, Collins wrote in his lawsuit. Good work, sir. Uh, your magic words have zero effect. Constitutional lawyer Caesar Kolonowski, that's a heck of a name, reviewed Collins' lawsuit and told the DCNF that his arguments definitely indicate to me that he is espousing or invoking the same type of pseudo-legal principles that you would find in the sovereign citizen movement. I agree, Caesar. I agree. While there is no leader or central authority for the sovereign citizen movement adherence to its legal theories, I wouldn't even call them legal theories, generally believe they are sovereign only unto themselves, Kolonowski explained. Unless they consent, no government can exercise jurisdiction over them, he said. The FBI goes further, describing sovereign citizens as an anti-government extremist that have the propensity for clogging up the court system with frivolous lawsuits. Not every action taken in the name of the sovereign citizen ideology is a crime, but the list of illegal actions committed by these groups, cells, and individuals is extensive, the FBI notes. Collins did not respond to inquiries seeking clarification on whether he considers himself a sovereign citizen. Um, I, think we, I think we know the answer. In response to the lawsuit, lawyers for San Diego County said the arguments he made were nearly impossible to decipher. Well, that's because you'd need to read the common law handbook first. After the U.S. District Court uh, dismissed his lawsuit, Collins appealed to the Ninth Circuit, which concluded his case was frivolous. Oh, those poor Ninth Circuit judges. Kolonowski, who studied sovereign citizen movement, said anyone that would self-ascribe to that ideology la likely lacks a very basic understanding of the Constitution and framework of the government and how law works. It's always concerning when a candidate or anyone in government does not have a strong grasp of the actual powers enumerated under the Constitution. Collins claimed in court his presidential campaign was worth $100 billion. This is the gift that keeps on giving, friends. Collins made a number of noteworthy statements about his finances in his court filings. For instance, in his initial fly filing, he attached documents claiming that he transferred a combined $800 million, billion, $800 billion worth of assets to his private trust, the royal family of Collins. In that case, why don't you just pay your child support? <laughs> Among the assets Collins claimed to have transferred to his trust was his social security number, birth certificate, his own self, oh, good transfer there, and his presidential campaign, each of which he asserted are worth $100 billion each. Oh, this guy. His trust contains a lengthy schedule of fees, which includes charges of $15 million for DNA or bodily fluids. That's interesting. With an additional extraction charge of $100 million for the forced giving of fluids and samples. That's probably because he was drug tested with ch and child support. 
Colin swore under penalty of perjury in an April 2018 court filing that he couldn't afford the fees necessary to appeal his case to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Collins told the court he was earning $6,861 a month in the Navy until his retirement in 2017. By the following April, Collins was surviving on just a $675 a month in Veterans Affairs disability benefits and had just $22 in his checking account, he told the court. But Collins wasn't paying his child support even when he had a steady military salary. His initial lawsuit includes a statement showing he owed $14,000 in back support the month before he retired from the Navy. The woman who's owed child support told the DCNF that Collins made only two child support payments in 2018 and one in 2019. She asked to stay anonymous for this story. Collins confirmed in the email he wasn't paying child support because he says he did not father the child. The child's not mine, which is why I'm not paying it. I've taken multiple DNA tests when the issue arised years ago. Look, man, there is a process. If you have DNA tests that show that you're not the father, there's a process you can use. Show it to the judge. You can get out of it. This is a case I'm still fighting. The courts violated my rights. I was supposed to have won the case, my due process rights. You don't have due process. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. You don't have due process rights if you're a sovereign citizen. I would ask that you not publicize that because I'm still fighting the case with the crooked court system till this date. Collins went from $22 in the bank to running a $761,000 campaign. He's raised nearly $761,000 since he started in in campaigning in July, um, of which has gone to pay for food, $112,000 for food and travel, and another $150,000 to a mysterious company called Pure Strategy Solutions for digital and strategic consulting services. To be sure, there's no indications Collins has violated campaign finance laws in his campaign's travel and transactions with Pure Strategy. He better be careful, make sure Pure Strategy is not his company. Collins has been pictured across the country rubbing elbows with major Trump world figures such as Donald Trump Jr. and Rudy Giuliani. Collins told the DCNF his, his extensive campaign-funded travel is justifiable, justifiable because the district he's seeking to represent doesn't have the funds to donate to take on the most hated and corrupt female politician in the country. Therefore, I need financial support from all over the country. Well, look, if you're running for Congress, I have no problem with you using your campaign funds to campaign. That's what they're for. Collins reported that the consulting firm Pure Energy Solutions shared the same address as his campaign. In subsequent filings, the consulting firm was listed at an address in Beverly Hills, and starting in October, the firm has an address in Delaware. A uh, quick sidebar is m- many companies in this country incorporate in Delaware because they have extremely favorable tax laws in regards to corporations. There are no records in California's business registry of Pure Strategy Solutions, and the firm's website merely says coming soon and offers no information about what they do. If there's not an investigation into his campaign finances, there will be soon. There will be soon. Collins told DCNF it was definitely an error he listed Pure Strategy as having the same air address, but Collins did not address any follow-up questions about his relationship to the firm. Instead, he sent a a cease and desist notice that he authored with no apparent legal representation, saying the DCNF does not have the right nor my permission to question me. Collins wrote in the notice that the DCNF's questions involving his closed presidential campaign, court proceedings, and questions regarding his finances were defamatory. Attempts to reach Pure Strategy Solutions were unsuccessful. That's because Pure Strategy Solutions probably doesn't actually exist. It's hard to be in the Navy with a president like Donald Trump. Oh, man. Collins only had positive things to say about President Donald Trump since he set his sights on Waters. We're going to unseat Maxine Waters. We're going to help Mr. Trump keep America great. and We're going to make California great again. He said in July, a 6.4 earthquake ravaged Southern California on the same day Collins launched his campaign. 
He said the earthquake was a sign from God that we got to get Maxine Waters out of there. Woo! This guy is out of control. Let's watch the video real quick. I'm, I'm out here tonight actually supporting my son. Oh, John, oh no, this guy. Collins, it's another, it's yeah. another guy who's running for, uh, for Congress, Congress in California, right? So yeah, yeah, definitely. For running for Congress against Maxine Waters uh, in the 43rd District. Wait, isn't that guy running against her too? We don't know. See, that. look, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you gotta call somebody by that guy, you don't even know who That's he is. Right. I know, I don't know. Look, I'm from South Central. Uh, I'm a walk away. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran, 13 years. Thank came you back. for freedom. Thank you. I mean, he's a good-looking, well-spoken dude. He's just, you know, all, he's got a lot of uh, nonsense floating around in there. Within months of launch, launching his congressional bid, Collins began boasting the support of major Republican politicians such as Tim Scott and Texas Representative Dan Crenshaw. Spokesman for Sean Smith told the DCNF that the senator did not and does not support this candidate and did not have a meeting with him. He takes pictures with a lot of folks, and it appears this guy took that picture and ran with it. Crenshaw staffer told the DCNF that Congress, the, te the Texas congressman, never supported Collins. Collins also posted in September he was looking forward to joining Representative Thomas Massey on the Freedom Caucus in a tweet campaigning in a tweet containing pictures of himself with the Kentucky lawmaker. Collins changed political parties four times after he entered, entered the political arena in November 2016 as a Republican. Over the next two and a half years, he filed paperwork with the FEC, Federal Election Commission, listing his affiliation as a Democratic Party, Millennial Political Party, the Green Party, and finally the Republican Party in February of 2019. A constant theme through Collins' presidential run was his criticisms of Trump. Collins said during a 2018 interview that he felt compelled to retire from the Navy in campaign against Trump over his concern that the president's Twitter account could lead to open military conflict. It's hard to be in the Navy with a president like Donald Trump. Not to say anything bad about him, but he agitates everything and everybody so much. Collins remained critical of Trump as recently as March 2019, which was shortly after his return to the Republican Party. He spoke out against Trump's incitement of hatred and violence and racism across the country. In 2016, saying the president's actions on the trail didn't sit well with my soul. I don't like Don I didn't like Donald Trump, and I felt everybody was centered around Donald Trump in the Republican Party. Colin said of his mindset entering pol presidential politics during an interview in March. They have no leadership, and I felt like they a bunch of cowards. Collins then said he returned to the Republican Party so he could fight Trump on his territory. If you want to knock out the biggest dog, then you step on his turf. The biggest dog is not in the Green Party. I'm stepping on the turf. I'm going to get my name out there with Donald Trump and everybody, and I'm going to fight him on his own stance because I can beat him. When contacted, Collins blamed his Green Party foray on very bad advice that he was given by someone in politics. So do you have your own ideas or do you just adopt the ideas that are programmed into your head? I had no clue as to how the political game was played, Colin said. I realized quickly the advice I was given to just get my name out was the worst idea I had ever been told. Oh, so you were just spitting nonsense to get in the news? Okay. Collins said he never intended to hurt the process that our president had started and that high profile people in Washington, D.C. encouraged him to drop out of the presidential race and run for Congress as a Republican against Waters. Well, isn't this guy just a treat? Um, you know, more than more than your flip flopping, Mr. Collins, uh, get rid of the sovereign citizen stuff, please. Please, get, I can't handle the sovereign citizens who are also representatives of the government, all right? That is an oxymoron. Let's have it stop. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching the Common Sense Academy. Uh, you heard my comments throughout. This guy is, uh, this guy is a little bit out there, and um, 
Frankly, I don't support sovereign citizens running for government positions. They don't believe in the government. They shouldn't be in it. Uh, there's a link to the article below. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. Please subscribe. Thank you.